Hello everybody and welcome to English Grammar with Amaya sir and I told you last time that in this lecture we are going to study change the voice in detail. What is the active voice? What is the passive voice? What are the types? Does it apply in real lives? We will try to study everything in detail and I promise that after this lecture you will have no doubts about change the voice. If after this lecture still you have any doubts, well, you are free to leave your comment. And let's get started straight away with what I have in mind for you today in this lecture. We are going to answer every bit over here. So what is the active passive voice? How is it applicable in real life? How to identify them? When is the passive voice useful? We are going to study their types one by one in detail. We will try to cover up as much as we can within the one hour that we have. If anything remains undone, we will schedule that for the next lecture. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let's dive into the first question at hand. The first question is active passive voice. It's not a question, but as, as a point, active passive voices, are they applicable in real life or their relevance in our real lives. So is change the voice just the topic meant to harass you so that the teacher gets to ask you grammar questions and when you get wrong, well, you'll be downgraded. No. Change the voice, the active voice, the passive voice does have an application in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, if you don't believe me, I want you to take um, a, probably use your imagination say that uh, there's a girl, there is a boy, and they both are deeply in love. Now imagine this, that uh, you have, uh, let's say, this boy and the girl here, and um, well, imagine this boy uses the passive voice instead of active voice in expressing his love. So instead of the typical I love you, he tells this boy here, Okay, he says to the girl, you are loved by me. Wouldn't that be something unusual? Active voice is so much straight to the point. Imagine instead of I love you, someone was to express love by saying you are loved by me. That's passive voice for you. What I mean by that is active passive voice is not such an alien concept, not at, at least as alien as you think it is. Okay, it's applicable. Take your um, exams, consider your, your question papers. Okay. Your teacher asks you the questions like fill in the blanks, match the following. Well, that is active voice. Imagine you have to read something like let the blanks be filled in by you. Let the columns be matched by you. You would request your teacher to give half an hour extra because that reading needs time. So active voice is always straight to the point and it is applicable in your everyday life if you actually have observed. Now, at least I've given you a couple of uh, examples where you clearly see that it applies, but you don't think it that way. You just take it as a topic for the exams. So change the voice is very much applicable. That's the first point to be discussed. So let's go to the next point then. What is the next point? How to identify them? Now it is here that I will start actually typing stuff and um, try to focus 100% Give me your undivided attention. So how to identify them? I'm going to use the black color for this. Yes. How to identify them? Take a look at this line. The cat killed the mouse. Such a common example. Very common but a very effective example. And the second one is the mouse was killed by the cat. Now, for those who are wondering, sir, come on, we know what you're trying to do here. Are you trying to teach us change the voice with a typical example? No, we are still on the point how to identify them. So here is how you can identify. Look at the line A. The cat killed the mouse. So here the cat is the doer. I repeat, the cat is the doer here. Killed is the verb. So what is my point? My point is, whenever you have the doer before the verb, it is the active voice. I'll say it again. Whenever the doer comes before the verb, you say it's active voice. Like in this case, you will find out that cat was the cat. 
featured before the verb kill. Consider line B now. The mouse was killed by the cat. Has the doer changed? No, the doer is still the cat. But my point is, now you would find that the doer, that is the cat, comes after the verb. The doer comes after the verb and this makes it the passive voice. So, to summarize, let's write it down. Therefore, what you conclude? If the doer, karta in Hindi, if the doer, someone who's doing something, doer, comes before or features before the verb, it is the active voice. Okay? And if the doer comes after the verb, you say it is the passive voice. So I think that this point is very clear. I am very sure of this, guys. So now you know when it is the active voice and when it is the passive voice. At least now you are very sure about it. I repeat, if the doer comes before the verb, it is active voice. If the doer comes after the verb, it is the passive voice. And that's why I gave you that example. Let us proceed to the next part. So now you know how to identify them. And I've shown you how active passive voice applies to real life. Now let us focus on the next point. When is the passive voice useful? I have already given you examples where I have told you that the uh, active voice is so much more to the point. I gave you the example of I love you being better than you are loved by me. Fill in the blanks being better than let the blanks be filled in by you. So are there cases where the passive voice is more important? Well, yes, there are. Let me make my point. The active voice is important when the doer is important. When you want to give importance to what happened rather than who did it. I'll say it again. When you want to give importance to what happened rather than who did it. In that case, the passive voice is more important. So can we consider an example here? Uh, I think we can. Uh, let's say that who, who is a, a robber? A robber is someone who robs, right? Right. So this this gentleman, and let's not call him. I'm not talking about the robber. The gentleman being robbed here. Okay. So a robber robs. Rocket science. So if unfortunately, imagine that your uh, local bank was robbed. See there. I just used the passive voice. Is it necessary to say the robbers robbed the bank? Or the bank was robbed here the bank was robbed is more important because obviously robbers robbed the bank is understood that's what the robber does hello that's why you call him a robber as you can see he's there with a gun very very evil so it's not that the passive voice is uh, not effective it is effective and i repeat when is it effective it is effective when you want to give importance to what happened and not who did it if you want to give importance to who did it then active voice is important so i hope that i've made myself very clear so let us go ahead and jot it down in our notes so i am saying the passive voice is important if what if what happened is more important than than what than who did it okay i repeat the passive voice is important and is the passive voice more important the passive voice is important if what happened is more important than who did it so you have to Guys, listen to this very carefully because we are diving into this discussion on change the voice and we are going to go in depth. So we started fundamentally with how change the voice applies in your life. Then we saw how to identify. Changing is of course asked in the exams, but you should know what is the active voice and what is the passive voice. And having given him enough examples of why active voice is important, I've now specified that even passive voice at times is important. Uh, in such cases, it is important. In fact, you better say it in passive voice. Now we will come to our uh, main task at hand today. So what is the main task at hand? 
we are going to learn how to change the voice here is the thing with the time division now i am going to go ahead and deal with one type at a time and one when we are done with one type when that one type i shall then concede you the time to make your notes today you must have noticed there's one important change uh, instead of the powerpoint presentation we are actually doing this uh, i am in fact typing the notes with you in the uh, word file so that is the change so we will study one type in detail there will be homework because then when i discuss the type i'll tell you i will deal with the examples and i'll tell you to do some homework so that i can be sure you understood then i would give you probably 2 minutes of time to jot it down we will see when it comes to that so the first type now we are going to study the types in detail so let me read out all the types first that will be better so what's the first type the first type is plain assertive the second type is interrogative the third type is imperative the fourth one is the missing doer and the fifth type that we shall study is the abstract type very important guys there are five types that we are going to study today let me read them one more time plain assertive statements the second one is interrogative statements then you have imperative statements then you have the missing doer and the last one we will study are the abstract types now abstract types are important because often if someone wants to test the knowledge of voices and uh, ask you some trick questions that's the the type where those trick questions will come and i bet you will find some day uh, this lecture a very useful investment that you did because then at that time you probably should remember let's study now one type at a time i have already told you what are the types i hope you have your notepad ready uh because the thing is we we are going to give you time not immediately i told you that let us study first and then you can jot down so what's the first type the first type that we are going to study is the plain assertive statement very important plain assertive statement now this one is also known as the declarative type of sentences plain statements in fact the statement that we Uh, studied at the start of this lecture uh, the the cat killed the mouse is plain assertive statement it's a declarative statement okay so this is probably the lengthiest part that we will do okay so let's get started now with some more examples apart from the cat and the mouse example here we go i'm going to make notes with you so let us study the type 1 let me pull it down and start on a fresh page there we go now let us consider example number 1 the example number 1 i'm going to take is they saw the movie simple declarative statement they saw the movie guys now what do you do in such a case in such a case what you should do is take a look always at the verb the verb is saw now one thing is when you want to change it to the passive voice you need the past participle you need the v3 now i hope you know that there is a present form there is a past form and there is a past participle form so in this case let's go back to our example in this case the verb you see is saw the verb you see is saw that's nice <laughs> the verb you see is saw now if you were to study uh, the v1 and the v2 and the v3 types let's go ahead and study here the v1 is see then the v2 will be saw and the v3 will be seen see saw seen so whenever we wish to change the voice and we want to make it passive we want the past participle form so we want seen i think that's a point to note guys okay very important point to note what did i just say when we want to change it to the passive voice you want the past participle the v3 form very important so let's get back to our example then we already um, saw what is v1 v2 v3 so let's change it what is the verb here the verb is saw so begin your answer after the verb 
so what is after the verb the movie so the movie was seen remember we wanted the scene type and why did we use was because it's past tense okay the movie was seen by them they saw the movie the movie was seen by them now if the first example actually made you believe that sir that's so simple so that means when it's change the voice it's always the last thing first and the first things goes last is it that simple the last things first first things last no that's not so simple always watch the verb again always watch the verb and it is for this point that i will give you a very good second example to make this point very clear that it is not just the case where it's first thing last and last things first so let us take a suitable second example the captain welcomed us on the cruise what is it the captain welcome us on the cruise now here if you go by the notion that last things first and first is last you will start your answer with on the cruise and that will be incorrect that will not be right so my point is important always watch the verb the verb here is welcome now what is the v1 v2 v3 of welcome let's get back to our notepad and uh, let us see welcome it will be welcomed with the ed and the third form will also remain welcomed so if that is the case how will the answer be here the verb is welcome and so you will start after the verb not the last thing first the first thing last so he welcomed us that means we were now we is plural watch the difference in the first one we used was because it was just the singular movie one movie here it's we we is plural right more than one person at least we so we you cannot say we was we were welcomed on the cruise by the captain now that is the perfect answer we were welcomed on the cruise by the captain by the way one more important thing to remember is put the part by the by part at the end normally students tend to do it also this way we were welcomed by the captain on the cruise it is my earnest request to you to put the by part at the end put the by part at the end it helps guys okay it's theoretically perfect we were welcome on the cruise by the captain it helps so let's proceed to one more of this uh, interesting examples uh, we will consider a present tense example now we've dealt with the past example with uh, the singular one with was the plural one with were now let us deal with the present tense um let's consider uh, an example with ing also she is eating an apple okay she is eating an apple very interesting example why because i'm now going to cover this ing there are a lot of students who will get confused between two words so when to use been b double e n and when to use being b e i n g ask yourself have that confusion right i am going to clear that when to use been and when to use being so here is the answer at the moment focus on the example at hand we have i n g here she is eating an apple so eating is the action here let's go to our notepad and uh, find out the v1 v2 v3 so we have eat the past tense of eat is eight not the number eight and the uh, v3 form will be eaten eat eat eaten so here back to our example she is eating an apple so eating being the action we will start with an apple i've told you that an apple is remember it's present tense 
And now because you have ing in the question, you are going to use being. So the simple way to remember is if it's ing in the question, you will use being that has ing in the answer. Guys, I'm absolutely certain you like this shortcut to remember. If there is ing in the question, you use ing with the word being. Okay, so ing in the question, you would use being in the answer. Let's get back and complete the answer. She is eating an apple. An apple is being eaten. Remember, we studied past participle, eat, ate, eaten. Remember, we just studied this, eat, ate, eaten. So, an apple is being eaten by her. Put the by part at the end. Guys, a quick revision. Remember I told you how, when, how to identify whether it is active voice or passive voice. If the doer comes first, that is if the doer comes before the verb, active voice. If the doer comes after the verb, passive voice. Remember that? Let's go ahead and make a quick check with this example of whether that applies. Here she is eating an apple. She is the doer here. Before the verb, active voice. The doer still remains her. And it's after the verb eaten. So it's passive voice. It's a very nice uh, revision point. Okay, let's proceed guys. Let's proceed. Now, when do you use been then? So let us consider an example. The lion, uh, the hunter, let's say. The hunter had killed the lion. The hunter had killed the lion. Of course, it's illegal to hunt. And it's very bad to kill it for passion. I am of this firm opinion. Never interfere with the food chain. Just for your sport. Okay. But anyway, for example, say the, the hunter had killed the lion. Now, uh, we were talking about being and being. In the last example, we saw if it's ing. You use being. Now I'm going to tell you that if you have has, have or had. I repeat, if you have has, have or had, you use been. B double E N. Not Mr. Bean. Bean. B double E N. Okay. Has, have, had. So in this case, you had had. In this case, you had had. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So let's get back to our example. The hunter had killed the lion. So kill. Kill is the verb. Let us go ahead and find out the V1, V2, V3 examples. So kill, killed and killed. So we are going to need killed as the verb, the V3 here. Right? So the lion had been remember has have and had so you are going to use been the lion had been killed by the hunter put the by part at the end i have no doubt guys that you are enjoying all these beautiful examples coming your way and now let us consider um, uh, the example well we have done been being we have done um, the has have had we have dealt with the changes uh, that it's not just last thing first first thing last i think we will consider uh, some example where the past participle remains the same let's do one example like that because there are cases remember where the past participle remains the same so let us go ahead and search for such a word and study that so now we are back to our notepad. Consider the example spread. It's a very good uh, word, okay? Spread. The past tense of spread. What do you think it is? Is it spreaded? No. Spread. The past tense is spread. The past participle is spread. Guys, it is a very interesting thing to remember. Spread. The past tense of spread is not spreaded. Very important. Normally, and that is why I considered this example. Because when you have, when you study the examples where it remains the same, often the first example that comes to your mind is cut. 
cut doesn't change to cutted, right? Cut, cut, and cut. But I thought better give an example that doesn't end with T. So spread, spread, spread. Okay. So let us now go ahead and do an example using that. We were studying example number four and now example number five. Oh, I'm going to stick to the blacking. They spread the rumor. They, now it's showing the red underline here because it's uh, British English, Indian English, not the US. They spread the rumor. Okay. They spread the rumor. Spread is the action here. We are going to start after that. So we are going to say the rumor was spread, not was spreaded by them. Very important. You should be aware of the verbs where the V3, V2, V3, V1, V2, V3 all remain the same. And that's why I made it interesting by considering an example outside of the words that end with T. Okay. Now, we. I think it is time for us to decide whether I want to give you some time to jot it down or not. But uh, there is one thing here. The one thing is, I think I have used more than one page, is it not? Let's go back and find out. I think I have used more than one page here. So, uh, how do I give you the time to copy this? Uh, if I give you, if I hold the screen here, then you can not see all the examples. So, I guess that uh, we will just continue with our discussion and we will uh, probably, you will probably need to revisit the video and then jot down the examples later make your notes later because i cannot it's not like the powerpoint presentation where everything is visible uh, together at you know on a single screen i'll have to scroll down and up and i would not be able to uh, do it in proper timing maybe you were fast maybe you were slow so better watch the video again and make your notes we are going to now start with the type 2 let me leave one um, more line here. We are going to study the type 2 now. I'm going to stick to black ink. So, what is the type 2? Very important, guys. Very important. We did the type 1, and if you remember, the type 2 was interrogative statements. So, basically, guys, what are interrogative statements? Interrogative statements are the ones that pose questions. You have a question there interrogation interrogative they are questions rhetorical so we are going to now see how change the voice can happen in case of interrogative statements consider example number one let's go to our word file and uh, i'm going to type something that is very common can you type this letter can you type this letter? So we are now dealing with the type 2. Can you type this letter? It's a question. So it is interrogative. However, the, the procedure will not change all that much. You should remember to focus on the verb. What's the verb here? Type. Type is the verb here. So you must know that the part this letter is very important because that features after the verb. However, because it is interrogative, you will need a correct auxiliary. I repeat, because it is interrogative, it's an interrogative statement, you will need an auxiliary. Then you can frame the question. And in case of can, it stays can. So let us see how to do that. Can you type this letter? So we will write can. And now remember I told you after the verb. So type is the verb and so after the verb you have this letter. So can this letter, now you need to remember an important structure B plus V3. What you need to remember is B plus V3, the word BE plus V3. And now by now you know V3 is the past participle. Let's go to the notepad and study this. What are we studying? Type, is it not? So type T Y P E becomes T Y P E D type 
and typed. Remember making the t sound instead of the d sound. It's not typed. It's typed. Make the t sound and you're perfect. Okay. So type, typed, typed. All right. So can this letter and now the structure is B plus V3. Can this letter be typed by you and you will keep the question mark. Guys, this is an important observation. You need to keep the question mark. If you if you have noticed when it comes to the direct indirect speech, when in the direct speech, if you have a question, you make it into you convert it to the reported speech. You bring it to the indirect speech. You remove the question mark. I'm sure you've observed this. In case of change the voice, the question mark stays. It's a question. All right. We've changed it from past active voice to the passive voice. One more like this. Okay. Consider another example. Example number two. Will you help me? Very simple example. Will you help me? Well, that reminds me of a wonderful topic that uh, I actually dealt with on this channel. There should be a video that you should get. In India, there are students who have this uh, really obnoxious habit of using na. It's a very irritating habit. So when I, as, as, I, as I was typing this example, I remembered that. Will you help me is a better question. You don't want to ask, you will help me na. See, you will help me now. That is not English. That now was not just English there. Will you help me? If you speak correctly, you will not need that now. So um, leave it in the comments if you have seen that video on the channel. If not, well, request for that. I will make a video on that. Because adding that now, I've seen this um, in, you know, across the student community. They have this. They... And again, that highlights the importance of auxiliary because they don't put the right auxiliary. So what they do is instead of asking, will you, they start with you will. And so they need na at the end. So will you help me? Then you don't need na. You will help me na. Then you need that na. Okay. So point to be noted as I was typing it. Nice things that come up, you know, during the discussions. Wonderful indeed. Let's get back to the example. Will you help me? In case of will as well, it remains will. The, the verb is, here is help. So what's the word after the verb? Me, is it not? So let's uh, study the verb in the notepad. We always do that. So help, the past tense will be help. I wonder why I did not type it in capital letter. Beg your pardon, help. Help and help. Again, notice the sound I'm making, guys. Helped. The T sound. Helped. I'm not saying helped. Helped. If you make the T sound, it's correct. It's better. It's sweet. Not helped. It's helped. Make the T sound. Okay. So, back to the example. We were dealing with, will you help me? So, will I B plus V3. Remember this structure? We have seen this in the previous example. So, will I B helped by you and then you put a question mark remember to retain that question mark very important now what can be our third example in this category i have told you that can stays as can will stays as will so is it the case that the auxiliary never changes mm, not like that not so simple it does change so when does it change it changes especially if it is has have depending on the singular or the plural very important this so the next example is very important pay attention not that the other examples were not important but this one is particularly important because can stayed can will stayed will but now in case of has and have even is and are depends on the singular or plural so Observe this and learn and enjoy. The third example we will consider is um, Have you done your homework? 
Now, many a students who <laughs> always they um, ask me, sir, you are a teacher, all right? Can there be one lecture where there is no homework or there is no reference to homework? No, nah, that doesn't happen. It's in the bones. There is always homework. But in this case, it's an example, so you would love it. We are dealing with has, have changes. So the example I'm dealing with is, have you done your homework? Now, what do you think homework is? Homework is singular, right? A single entity. So, again, here, the verb is done. So, let's study the word done in the notepad. We always do that. Done is the past tense, right? So, do, did, done. Is it not? Do, did, done. That's how the verb changes happen in case of do, do, did, done. Okay, so back to the example. Because the homework is singular, I told you the homework is singular. Because it is singular, you will say, has your homework, and if you remember, if you remember what I said about has, have, Remember that hunter example? I told you, has, have, had. You use been. I told you that. And I'm absolutely sure you remember that. And we will need that. Apply that over here. So, has your homework been done? Remember we saw that. Do, did, done. Has your homework been done by you? Question mark. So, have changed to has. Because you considered homework and uh, you had to consider homework and homework is singular. So these are the things you have to remember when it comes to interrogative statements. Okay. Now, let us proceed to type 3. But before that, I am just wondering, is it okay to give the homework now immediately for type 1 and type 2? Or is it better for us to finish the explanation for the entire thing and then give you the homework. Hmm, what to do, what to do? I'll give the homework later. Let's first go ahead and finish all the types. Is that what you just said? I'm sure you just said that. So type number three, we have done with, uh, we are through with the type one, we studied the type two and now I think it is time for us to go ahead and study the type number three. So what is the type number three? The type number three cover will include imperative statements. I repeat, imperative statements is the type three of change the voice. You would now slowly but steadily begin to understand how vast this change the voice topic is but at the same time i'm sure you're enjoying the lecture and by practice you will really be uh, thorough with this okay type 3 includes imperative statements what are imperative statements commands orders requests are all imperative okay orders commands requests are imperative statements. So, uh, change the voice also applies to them. We will consider this first. Let us create a heading. You need that, is it not? We will now move to type 3. Let us go on a new page. And now we are studying type 3. I should only type, uh, copy this type 3. And I will retain my black ink for it. To our first example now. We don't need it underlined. Okay, the first example for type 3 imperative. Call the doctor. Call the doctor. Is it an imperative line? Yes. Call the doctor. It's an instruction. Maybe it's an emergency. It is an imperative one. So what do we do in such cases? Point 2, remember. The point to remember is that when it's imperative, you start with the word let. I repeat, if it is imperative, you start with the word let. Start with the word let. Not late. Let. Late. Mm -hmm. Late. Mm -hmm. Let. 
See, there's a difference, right? It's interesting when you know the short vowels and long vowels. There is, of course, a difference. Let. Let's consider the example now. Call the doctor. So, again, call is the action here. So, obviously, something after the verb is important for us. So far, you must have noticed that pattern. But first, I told you, because it is an imperative statement, you start with the word let. Let the doctor. And now important, again important, remember the structure. The structure is B plus V3. Something that you did in the interrogative pattern as well. B, B, E, singly. B, E, B plus V3, the third form. So we will go ahead and study that in the word pad or the note pad. We are, we, we are dealing with call the doctor, is it not? Let us see. Call, the past tense is called and the V3 is called. Now this is an example where you want to make the D sound. I told you, looked, the T sound. But here in this case, it's called, the D sound, called. Then don't make it called, okay, called. So now call changes to called, the V3 is called. So we need the uh, the structure v pl b plus v3 so what is b plus v3 in this case let the doctor be called and you can write by you in the bracket it's not compulsory that's why i've just excluded that however you can write that part by you in the bracket outside because by you is obvious if someone has told you call the doctor let the doctor be called by you is implied that's why there is this method of writing that by you in the bracket. Make a note of all these things. And it's better you write it, but you write it in the bracket. But because it is implied, it's understood by you, you tend to write it in the bracket. Okay, let us consider one more example. Um, another instructions. We need instructions here, is it not? So the next instruction... Um, Calculate your taxes for this year. Calculate your taxes for this year. Now, what are you going to do? Calculate your taxes for this year. Calculate is the action. So, we now know your taxes will be important. I have told you that enough number of times that it is not the last thing first, the first thing last. It's not like that. So in our example, it is important for you to remember your taxes is an important part. But isn't it imperative? Well, yes, it is imperative. Why? Because it's uh, an instruction. Calculate your taxes for this year. So by the way, talking of this word Y-E-A-R, let me share something interesting. As usual, during the explanation, interesting points pop up. Y-E-A-R is different in pronunciation than E-A-R. E-A-R is ear. Okay. Y-E-A-R is ear. Notice the subtle difference. Guys, I'm sure you would love this. I will tell you how it makes a difference. E-A-R is ear. Y-E-A-R is ear. The first initial E is not very clear. This is ear. Y-E-A-R is year. So on someone's birthday, never ask how many years old are you? His ears are as old as he or she is. How many years old are you? How many year? The year should be direct. If you say ear, then it's this. Y-E-A-R and E-A-R. I'm sure you love this, guys. Okay, so we were discussing this example. Calculate your taxes for this year. So, calculate. Let's go to the word pad and study the word calculate. So, it is going to be calculate, changing to calculated, changing to calculated, or rather remaining calculated. So, it's calculate, calculated, and calculated as V3. And now for our example, 
Remember the start is with the word let. I told you because it is imperative. We start with let. We did that in the first example as well. And also you have to remember the structure B plus V three. So let after the verb you have your taxes. So let your taxes be calculated. Remember we saw calculate, calculated, calculated. So let your taxes be. Oh sorry. Let your taxes. For this year, finish that part, guys. Finish that part here. Be calculated, and again you can write by you. In fact, you can write by you and then put the full stop. That's a better idea. On second thought, do it that way. Let's correct it in first example as well. This is much better. Okay. So let your taxes for this year. Remember, let your taxes for This year be calculated. There, of course, still is an element of e, but that e is not very clear. Okay, let calculate your taxes for this year. Calculate your taxes for this year. Subtle difference, but a clear difference. By practice, you will get that. So let your taxes for this year be calculated by you. That is in the bracket. Are we done with the imperative one? Well, there is one type that I want to cover in the imperative one, but uh, I suppose I'll cover that up, or rather cover that, not cover that up. I will cover that when we deal with the abstract examples. There is there is something special I have for you in the abstract. I I will say this again that if someone wants to test your knowledge, you change the voice. They will either ask you these examples where you would be confused between been and being. Or they'll ask you the examples from the abstract type, which we are going to study. Okay, so I think we'll wrap up this imperative discussion and move to the type four. It's a very great discussion we are doing. Very happy with the way we are progressing. Revisit this. Watch this again. Watch this video again if you want to make your notes. At the moment, if this is the first time, just enjoy the lecture. Let it run through. and then you can it's there on the channel you can the channel's name is right here is it not yeah it's right there the english grammar with amal so you can go ahead and watch that in order to make detailed notes later we have done uh, three types and now let's study the type 4 in fact i copied the type 3 text right so this is now type 4 and i will continue with my black ink So, what is uh, the type four? Before we go ahead, in fact, I'm going to let it be bold. It's just better to see that way. What is the type four? The type four is not the abstract. Um, it is better to keep the abstract ones for the last. So, we are now going to study the type four, and type four is the missing doer. Many scholars fall trap for this, guys. It's so important. Missing doer. Now, what is a doer? I told you what is the doer right at the start of this lecture. Okay, doer is someone who does something in the line. Karta in Hindi. So when the doer is absent, you have to introduce a doer. You have to supply the doer, and then of course a suitable doer. Uh, and then change the voice one interesting thing here normally so far whatever we've seen is the active voice changed to the passive voice when it's the missing doer it is the passive voice to the active voice you remember that example i gave you about the bank was robbed and not saying it as robbers robbed the bank that was passive to active so when it's the missing doer be sure of one thing that it is passive to active one more thing you want to remember and which is interesting is so far we have used the v3 remember because this time it is passive to active you will jump from v3 to v2 so this time we need the v2 and i will i promise i'll consider good examples to clarify this let us go back to our uh, word file so type 4 and the type is missing doer let us consider this the batsman what did i do yeah the batsman was given out i repeat the batsman 
was given out. We are studying type 4. The batsman was given out. So, is the doer given here? The batsman was given out. Who gave the batsman out? So, batsman is not the doer. The batsman was given out. By whom? That by is not supplied. Which means that this is missing doer. So, that's the way you identify whether it is a missing doer or not. The batsman was given out by, you don't know, that's missing doer. So, who is the, uh, the right doer here? If we are talking about cricket, obviously. So, it's the umpire. So, when you know the obvious doer, then avoid using they. They applies, it's universal. Use they. If they are, if they have not, if they have not given doer, use they. But in this case, because we are talking about batsman being given out, you can use the doer as the umpire. But first, let us go to the word pad to study the formation. We are talking here about given. So, give, the past tense is gave and the past participle is given. I want to bring it to your attention again that this time we are looking to go from the V3 to the V2. I hope you remember that guys. You remember that, right? Because it is passive to active this time. We want to go from V3 to the V2, from the past participle to the simple past, in this case, in the missing doer category. Back to the example. The example was the batsman was given out. And now I have told you that the logical doer is the umpire. So I'm going to say the umpire gave the batsman out. Now remember here how the change is from the V3 was given to the V2. V in the other types went from V2 to V3 or from V3 we stayed at V3 in cases of interrogative. But here it is V3 changing to V2 with a very relevant doer. I just told you you can use they, they is universal. Of course, if the doer is not very clear, go ahead and use they. Perfect. But because it was the batsman, I chose the doer as the umpire. Let's consider one more example. So, example number two is, let us consider the example, the, uh, the taxes were collected. What is the line, guys? The taxes were collected. Our example is the taxes were collected. Now you tell me if I am saying the taxes were collected, of course I can go ahead and use they as the doer. But if it is taxes, who is going to collect it? By the government, obviously. I hope you know the spelling of government is with the N, but you don't say government, you say government. But there is N in the spelling. All right. So we were discussing this example of taxes were collected. So we are going to insert the pro proper and appropriate doer government. The government collected the taxes. Collect, collected, collected. That's how it goes. If you still want me to go ahead and do that in the word pad, let us study that. Collect, the present form, collected and the V3 remains collected. That's how it goes. Okay. So, the tax was collected or rather the taxes were collected. The government collected the taxes. Next one. Uh, let us consider the one where it's irregular verb. So, the speech was given. Delivered is a better verb, but I want to stick to given. The speech was given. Now, who is likely to give a speech? I'm sure you remember your, you remember every Independence Day or Republic Day celebration so far that you've attended by a politician, by the chief guest. So, more likely the politician or the leader. Let's call it the leader. Leader is general. Of course, you don't want to say they because all together cannot give one speech and that's why I mean choosing interesting examples here. They cannot give one speech. They can give speeches individually one by one. 
but if you are talking about the speech was given as one speech it better be leader that's why choosing the correct doer matters it does matter so let us get back to our example the speech was given i'm going to say the leader give gave given that's how you do that let us go to the word pad and study give is the present form gave is the past form and given is the past participle give gave given back to our example the speech was given the leader gave the speech and this was the missing doer category so can you guys uh, tell me all the types of uh, change the voice we've studied so far let us study let me take you to a blank screen and uh, try to ask you what was type 1 type 1 was plain assertive statement what was type 2 type 2 was the interrogative statements we studied what was the type 3 type 3 in the type 3 we covered the imperative statements and just now we dealt with the type 4 the type 4 is the missing doer okay and now we have to go ahead and do the type 5 which is the ab abstract type I have already told you and I would like to remind you again that this is the one area where you could be asked a trick question. There are only two or three examples that I will share with you and um, it is likely that I will probably give you the homework only in the next lecture because we only have about three minutes to end this lecture. But uh, of course, we are going to cover the uh, abstract examples and then end this. So let me go ahead and... Uh, pull up the word pad again there we go and we are going to now study the type 4 or type 5 is it yeah type 5 type 5 which is the abstract and I'm going to stick to my black ink in the first example in the type 5 guys first example in the type 5 I am going to cover up the ex cover the not cover up. Why do I say cover up? Cover the example. Mm, the mango. Uh, tastes sweet. Okay, this is a very interesting example, guys. The mango tastes sweet. I repeat, the mango tastes sweet. Now imagine, is this an order is it imperative no uh, is there um, something like a direct object or something that you can change it to the by part no is it interrogative no is there a missing doer there's no question of anybody doing anything here the mango tastes sweet that is why I told you that if there is a likely test they will ask you such questions now for the answer. You are with the sir. The answer. Question was, the mango tastes sweet. And so the answer for this is, the mango is sweet when tasted by someone. What? By someone. Remember we used to do that by you. So here is your answer. The mango tastes sweet. The mango is sweet when tested or rather oh, when tasted, not tested, when tasted. Ah, such a beautiful example that came to my mind again. I told you there is a difference. Test and taste. There is a difference. You don't test a mango. You taste the mango. So when tasted. Taste, the V2 is tasted, the V3 is also tasted. I got one example, um, I should disclose this with you, or rather disclose it to you, that I am very active on Quora as well. So I get asked uh, a lot of questions, they are directed to me. And I got this question, alcohol tastes sour. So alcohol is sour when tasted, the exact line. I I thought I'll share this with you. So if there are 
trick questions, they'll come from the abstract type. And there is one more example that we will deal before we bring this to a conclusion. Uh, the last but not the least is this example that we'll study. Just shut up. That's it. Shut up. <laughs> what an example, is it not? Shut up. That's it. The example is shut up. Is it the favorite line the girls say? Is it the favorite line? Girls, any comments? Leave it. Is that your favorite line? Anyway, shut up. How do you change the voice here? Again, remember, it's not interrogative, but it is imperative, but there is no, uh, nothing after the verb, no object. So what to do here? In this case, the way you do it is as follows. I'm going to do it. You are advised to shut up. Remember, guys, that's the answer. You are advised to shut up. I want you to compare this shut up thing with shut it. Guys, I'm making it very clear. Observe. If the question is shut up that we just saw, then the answer is you are advised to shut up. But imagine if the question was shut it, then your answer will be let it be shut. Going by the imperative type we studied. Again, again, again. Shut up is without an object. So, you are advised to shut up. If you have shut it, let it be shut. And that shut is another example where the verb remains the same. So, shut remains the past tense is shut. The past participle is also shut. That is fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed this bringing this lecture to you. I hope that everything about Change the Voice is so clear. If you liked it, recommend it to your friends and let them also watch. The homework is not given in this lecture, but we will cover it uh, in some other lecture and I'll give you some sentences as homework, okay? As usual, up until next time, stay home, uh, take care, don't unnecessarily venture out. If it's really necessary, go out, take care of yourself. We'll meet again very soon.